Now, we've talked about this before, and I can't believe it's been five years. I was looking for YouTubes on my YouTube channel, Dave Leonard. I'm sorry, let me rewind that. www.youtube.com slash C slash Dave Landry. And this was five years ago when I did this. Now, this is based on Steen Barger's work. And it's kind of interesting, before going into the trade, one part of your brain is working. And then once you get into that trade, another part of your brain sort of takes over. The two U's, so to speak. And I think that's quoting Steen Barger. When you're going into the trade, there's that excitement and the dopamines I talked about earlier. There's optimism. And then once you're in a trade, you might find yourself feeling hope. There's excitement going in, and then there's possibly boredom, enthusiasm, which, by the way, is my second favorite asm. What's number one? Oh, I'm sorry. Sarcasm is my second favorite asm. Enthusiasm is my first. <laughs> that joke didn't work, did it? And you're all excited going into the trade, but then you can find yourself in a state of fear. No regret, right? There's promise and then there's reality. There's known and then there's unknown. And I think it was Montier said that stress goes up when information is unknown or changing. Well, that sounds like 8.30 Central Time when the opening bell rings, right? There's a lot of logic that can go into a trade. Okay, we've got a nice trend here, accelerating trade. This is an actual trade I think we took. This is a TKO, as you can plainly see. And then there's emotions when you're dealing with the reality of it. Everything on the left is a bit statistical, a little bit more left brain on the left, right? A little bit more right brain on the right. You might be a little irrational and emotional. There's a bit of certainty on the left. You could see this stock has gone up. You could see this stock had made a trend following a TKO, a trend following moron pattern, TKO. Yeah, that was the joke, Stuart. I just kind of messed it up. And then once you're in the trade, there's the uncertainty. Well, information stress, as I just said, comes when information is uncertain or changing or unknown. Well, everything's kind of static on the left, right? Well, everything is static on the left, right? On the right, it's more of a fluid situation. Now, not to redo the whole presentation I did five years ago, which I might do soon. I guess it's time to redo it. But the before is a little bit more of the new brain reasoning. Now, when I say new brain, old brain, I should have grabbed my brain, which I have in the um, and the closet, maybe next week I'll, I'll whip out my brain, <laughs> but I have a brain. And the down in the, in the bottom of the brain, I think, you know, here's your brain up here and there's a little bitty part down here, maybe like that would be like the amygdala and all the lizard brain stuff. Well, the new brain is what sits on top of it. It's what has evolved, okay? So the new brain is a lot of reasoning involved. As I said a second ago, it's your left brain. It's more logical, okay? Now, the old brain is more, and often your, that's where your emotions come from, your old brain, okay? So you've got a little small part of your brain called amygdala. It fires off real quick. And I could never wrap my head around how could that little, little brain control the big brain. <laughs> and... I recently read something where if you have like a panic attack or something along those lines, what's happening is you're feeling something in your body that is sensed by that amygdala, which sends a signal over to your right brain, I guess, which is more emotional and has, it has you start to react and it becomes like a negative feedback loop. But the bottom line is that little part of your brain, which is very quick acting, as I've said before, when you're getting ready to step out on a curve and 
remember, as I said, now if the yellow ones don't stop, right? A taxi cab's getting ready to run you over. You could contemplate your navel and say, well, you know, what's going on with this guy? Why didn't he like me? Or what's happening here? Or you can jump out the way. Well, your amygdala sort of hijacks the rest of your brain and pulls you over. And as I've said before, one of the best things you can do, and I don't know if it's still on my desk. Oh, I can't reach it. But I have a little clock and I wind the clock. I used to at least, I need to remember to do that again. And that comes from the reasoning that I was explaining to Greg when he asked me what I was gonna talk about in a in a seminar that I was doing for Traders Expo. And he was he happened to be visiting in I think it was in New York. And I said, well, I'm gonna talk about how sometimes you just need a few seconds to not make a stupid decision. And he said, wind the clock. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, well, and, it, and I did later see that he wrote about in his book, uh, not dancing with the trend, but um, investing with the trend. But when he was a fighter pilot, when he was in the simulators, the, the idea of the instructor when you're in the simulators is to get you to panic and get you to make a lot of mistakes better to make them on the ground than in the air. And if you make too many of them, obviously you're never gonna get behind the stick, right? Anyway, in order to, and he, he like all the other students were young pilots, I guess, aspiring pilots, were having difficulty with all the alarms and bells and whistles going off that they're, when they're effing with you. And back then the, I think he flew F4s, I forget, but anyway, uh, older fighter pilots, they actually had a fighter planes, they actually had an analog clock. And he would, when everything starts hitting the fan, instead of freaking out, trying to figure out what's happening, he would just take a deep breath and wind the clock. And when he later flew commercial airlines, he would kind of like metaphorically wind the clock. And one time he was telling me a story where an engine shut down or was, 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 causing problems and the co-pilot's like you want me to shut it down he's like no 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 you know and he took a breath and he metaphorically wound the clock you know touched the dash or whatever just to just to take a deep breath and said no don't do that because you might shut down the engine that's running and that would be a bad thing especially if we can't get it restarted to not have any engines on, on an airplane Anyway, the point is take a few seconds to assess the situation and try not to get too emotionally charged. And as I've often said, one of my big problems is if I'm looking at my screens and then I go in the house and have lunch or whatever or breakfast even, and I come back in, all of a sudden everything looks looks great. All of a sudden I see something moving and I, I get a little too caught up in the in the flickering ticks which is, a, um, I think, Todd Harrison. I, I don't, I've never seen what Todd said that, but I never met Todd or anything, but uh, Dave Keller uses that term often. And all I really need to do is just take a deep breath, wait a few seconds, and that'll pass, and I won't make that emotionally charged decision. The right brain is a lot more emotional, okay? So you've got the old brain, and then you've got your right brain. Combination of these two are very, very emotional. And Steen Barger said, and it might have also been Curtis Faith, but one of those two guys said that when you're doing something in trading, try to take more of a whole brain approach and send it over to the other side to check it out, okay? And I never fully understood what that means, but as I'm saying it out loud, this is why I like teaching because I learned the process too, right? From a selfish standpoint, but it's kind of like, okay, where's my stop? Where's the, let's say the 30 day EMA or is there a Landry light or whatever? And instead of just jumping out of a position, maybe start looking at something that's a little bit more logical, okay? So maybe if I find myself getting emotional, like, oh crap, I'm losing money. And it's something I wanna talk about in a little while too, about not watching your equity, spoiler alert. But if you can send it over to the other side and maybe have a check, check it out. 